All right, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Welcome to our eighth of our 10 part series conversations with the college. My name is Greg Vansler, and I serve as executive director of engagement and alumni relations here at the Missouri State Advancement Division. And we created this series uh, to give alumni and community members the opportunity to connect with and hear from our college deans and the vice president of student affairs. And our deans and, and the vice president of student affairs are just excited to share with you what has been happening on campus today. Uh, we want to celebrate some of the recent achievements that have happened on campus and in the colleges, uh, respectively, and to paint a picture for what really the future holds uh, for each college and these academic units. Through the conversations, um, our senior administrators have illustrated the impact alumni and friends have had on their respective colleges, as well as um, what's taken place as part of the Onward Upward campaign, which is rounding out this year. This impact translates into new buildings, into scholarships and professorships and much more. And I want to thank all of you who've supported Missouri State throughout the capital campaign and throughout your life um, with Missouri State. And we really appreciate your time today to tune into this conversation over the noon hour here Central Time. Now I'd be remiss to say um, that the Dar College of Agriculture has gone through um, some really sad moments here in the last 14 days with the um, with the news about the loss of Dean Ron Del Vecchio, and, um, and we miss him greatly, and, um, and we're just thrilled to hear uh, today that uh, Dr. Michael Burton and, and, and Dean Emeritus Anson Elliott, um, new addition in, in, within the last 90 minutes, have joined us uh, to, to share with you what's happening in the Dar College of Agriculture. And I'd like to bring them on as I introduce them. Um, and just a, a few housekeeping notes. Um, throughout this conversation, you're going to hear an update on the college from Dr. Burton. You're going to have a chance to hear from Dr. Elliott. And um, at the close of their remarks, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions of them. There's a chat function and a Q&A function in the Zoom webinar. You're welcome to ask those questions throughout the presentation. I'll come back on the screen and moderate your questions and ask, of, and ask them um, your thoughts um, at the end of their presentation. Uh, so we, again, greatly appreciate you being here. And now I'd like to move to introducing our special guests. Uh, Dr. Michael Burton is, is the college representative and currently serves as the Dean's proxy. Um, he's ra he was raised on a small secondary enterprise farm in Indiana. He was active in FFA and in 4-H. He attended DePaul University in Indiana. He earned his graduate degrees from the, the Ohio State University and the, and the University of Nebraska before taking his first faculty post at North Carolina State University. He came to MSU in 2008 and has served in the Environmental Plant Science and Natural Resources Department as associate and full professor teaching sustainable agriculture, grain, and forage crops, weed science, and other courses. To our other special guest, Dean Anson Elliott, Interim Dean Emeritus. Dr. Elliott is from Houston, Missouri. Originally an ag educator, he went on to earn his PhD from the University of Missouri in plant breeding and genetics. His first university faculty position was at University of Minnesota as a wild rice breeder. Now known uh, at least two generations of students of alumni, Dr. Elliott has served more than 35 years in the Department of Agriculture, then School of Agri Agriculture, and now the Dar College of Agriculture here at Missouri State. He is regarded as an innovator in education and leadership in agriculture and played a key role gaining support of the USDA non-land non grant colleges grants program, the MSU Bond Learning Center and many other initiatives. In addition to his role as Dean Emeritus, Dr. Elliott is the, is the director of the Center for Agriculture and Food Security for Convoy of Hope and a newly appointed member of the MSU Board of Governors. Gentlemen, thank you for being here with us this afternoon. We look forward to your presentation. Thanks so much for having us on here, Greg. We're, we're very pleased to be able to offer this update for events going on at the College of Agriculture. And, and of course, I'm always pleased to have my, uh, my mentor and former boss and now current boss, um, Dr. Elliott, participating with us in this. He's, there's no one who has a better knowledge of our history and programming. 
Well, uh, let me get right to it, Sue, because our time is limited. Um, I want to provide you with some background for events and uh, new additions to the College of Agriculture. Um, the, uh, of course, our namesake, the, the Dar College of Agriculture, comes from the enormous support of the Dar family. Bill and Virginia Dar have uh, not, uh, not supported us from their inception because, they, of course, they weren't alive back in 1905. But since the uh, since our, our naming and our transition uh, following the gift of the Jernigan Ranch, um, the additions at the Bond Center with the Bond Center for Learning and, and other events I'm going to share with you in just a moment, we're thrilled to have such a tremendous family example in our um, Dar College of Agriculture family. Um, our history as a College of Agriculture um, uh, actually predates the uh, start of Missouri State University because of the founding of the State Fruit Experiment Station in 1899. Um, you can see in these images of uh, uh, folks working in a victory garden um, in uh, adjacent to Carrington Hall there, I think, and the original greenhouses that were are now on the rooftop of, of Carl's Hall that show some of our transition, not only in technology, but in space as our facilities and buildings continue to increase. Um, our foundation principles have long been to experiment and to identify pilot programs and now certificate programs um, in order to test the waters for programming that might really support our students as they look for jobs and opportunity to further expand agriculture and become innovators themselves. Um, Dr. Elliott and others have always supported the fact that great ideas and opportunities often come from unexpected sources, so we shouldn't be afraid to in inspect and identify those that might have some create some opportunity for others in the future. And clearly this idea of the, the care factor is, is part of, of the history of the College of Agriculture where we view each student as, as being a, um, an individual, a unique and special creation. We want to foster their gifts and, and help develop their skills uh, in the best way that we're able. Uh, a person who was uh, intimately involved with that um, left us on, uh, on the 5th of April um, Dr. Ron Del Vecchio came to us in 2016, and not long after, just a, about six months, um, was identified to be um, afflicted with, with leukemia. Um, I scarcely would call it an affliction because of the valiant way in, in Dr., that Dr. Del Vecchio continued to battle this disorder. Um, but uh, um, sadly, he passed, but uh, fortunately, he was a tremendous and bold example in a long and valiant battle against leukemia. He had clear priorities, um, God, his family, and hard work, and we are um, rewarded for, by his example. Well, uh, Dr. Del Vecchio continued our, our history of always placing students first, and that's been really clear over the years. Um, we've uh, increased our, uh, our efforts in terms of recruitment in recent years as we've seen our, our changes in our economy in a, in a hopefully post-COVID environment. Um, we've always done well in terms of retention in large part thanks to our own students and their efforts to reach out and build a family sort of atmosphere. And I'll mention our student organizations is a key part of that in a few minutes. Um, we focus on making sure that our students are able to, to graduate because they gain good advising. Uh, we operate in a family atmosphere and our faculty and staff are uh, trained in this culture of placing students first. And as a part of this, um, of a faculty that is teaching focused, our instructors have long made students their top priority. More recently, Megan Wilson has joined us, um, hired just last year as a recruitment specialist to help us in a challenging environment to continue to add to generations of bears for years to come. Clearly, agriculture has a strong demand, a real need for our graduates, uh, lots of positions that are available and lots of um, opportunity, not only for persons who are working directly in production agriculture, but in the multiplicative sort of way that you see our, um, our ag industries. For every, um, every one job that you find in production, there'll be another 10 jobs associated with, uh, with value added or marketing or transportation or processing or education. So we're thrilled to be uh, among the leaders in offering programs uh, that support development of agriculture within the state. Well, I mentioned that we um, started even before the university with Missouri State Fruit Experiment Station. That facility continues to, to function in a terrific way. 
um, established in 1899 with the university starting in 1905, of course. Um, the uh, State Fruit Experiment Station is a uh, 190 acres of, 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 of many different fruits and vegetables and in particular um, grape and uh, grape genetics and enology. So we of course have work in many different uh, tree and, and ground fruit species, but also the Grapes uh, Center for Viticulture and Enology is, is one of three key um, centers of excellence in the country, our partner institutions being University of California at Davis and Cornell University. Carl's Hall, um, originally built in 1958 and improved prior to my arrival in 2008, but I believe in about 2000, or 1998, 2002, when the improvements were made to the to the facility. Um, just two weeks ago, as most of you who are students here will remember, uh, in early April, we host the district FFA contest in Carl's Hall at the Dar Agricultural Center and other locations, as many locations as we can secure in order that we can help um, administer those district contests for the National Blue and Corn Gold. Uh, this was the first time since the beginning of the COVID pandemic that we've been able to host this back in our facilities. Um, so it's been since April of 2020, and now April of 2022, we're glad to, uh, to resume that function. An important part of our recruitment and a wonderful opportunity for us to um, continue, contribute to an organization from which many of us also gained a lot. I also want to mention our uh, other key facility here in Springfield, the DAR Agricultural Center named again after Bill and Virginia Dar with numerous improvements, one of which I'll follow up here in, in just a moment. This is our 90 acre facility there in, on Kansas Expressway and is now home to the Animal Science Department, which is located in the Bond Learning Center. I also need to mention uh, a recently dedicated, in fact, just Wednesday, uh, two weeks ago, uh, we dedicated the Ag Academy, which many of you will have heard about as, a, as it's been developing over the past couple of years. And the Ag Academy is, is part of the uh, interface where agriculture and rural aspects of life should meet the urbanization, as you might um, expect there, the view of Kansas Expressway and our DAR Agricultural Center um, livestock facilities. If you were to take a view um, north of the uh, DAR, of the Bond Learning Center instead of south, as we see right here, then you would find uh, a new facility which is the DAR Agricultural Center. Um, on uh, Wednesday, two weeks ago, uh, Governor Parsons, President Smart, as well as the entire DAR family were present in order to celebrate the initiation of this magnet school. So this is a, a school that joins other popular Springfield Public Schools magnet school, school programs like the, uh, the Wolf, the Discovery Center, the Health Sciences Center um, uh, programs for students who are typically in grades five through eight. This program in a, in a new facility, which you see pictured there at the bottom, uh, will actually begin accepting students um, very shortly with a full enrollment beginning in August. Eventually, we're anticipating 100 students in grades four through six. At, at initially, though, students grade in grades four and five um, will populate that building um, in order that they can have a really ag-focused program. I was very pleased to be able to meet with um, the educators as well as the administrators at that facility, and we look forward to a long and wonderful opportunity to be able to uh, not only participate in the educational programs that will go on in that building, but also share the other DAR agricultural facilities as part of that educational opportunity for the next generation. The Jernigan Ranch is key among our um, facilities. It's our, our largest facility. In fact, uh, just a few weeks ago during a, an orientation event, I had the opportunity to participate in a, um, in a program for our new Board of Governors uh, members. The provost, Dr. Einhelig, explained to me that I would have the opportunity to um, represent the College of Agriculture in order of the size of colleges. So I immediately assumed that that meant we would go first because we have more than 4,000 acres. Nobody else can compete with that. But it turns out he meant in terms of enrollment. So I uh, didn't get to go first, but still we have a lot of bragging rights. More than 4,000 acres spread out across our facilities. 
over 3,300 of which are in Mountain Grove with our um, beef and wildlife, natural resources, forestry programming. Um, faculty are engaged in research programming there in habitat construction um, and through a partnership with uh, Missouri Department of Conservation. And it's also home, of course, to the largest university owned cattle herd in the United States. That number is uh, just under 1,000. I think our two year average is at 990 head of, of cattle, um, both Hereford and crossbred animals at that facility. Um, Baker's Acres, which some of you are familiar with, continues to be a supporting dimension of our uh, programming, producing hay and wildlife conservation areas for our um, beef program and livestock program, our equine program all combined. The uh, uh, Sheely Farm is, a, is another key facility in our, in our grass-based beef production. It also is home to the Holos Conference Center, um, some 250 acres there on the on the north side of Springfield, just north um, uh, near Fair Grove. I also want to give a quick welcome to the new Sheely Farm manager, Josh Piotrowski. He is a graduate of College of the Ozarks University and comes to us with a, with a lot of energy and we're excited to welcome him as part of the College of Agriculture family. Another facility that, uh, that uh, is there nearby on the north side of Springfield, just north of the I-44 corridor, is the Woodlands. Um, donated by the Woods family and um, is a um, key facility for our forestry laboratory used by Dr. Michael Gornt, where he trains students both in forestry sampling and habitat and management and, uh, and we'll soon be seeing a timber sale um, from that facility. Great opportunity for students um, of forestry to begin to um, see and learn firsthand how to conduct modern forestry. Uh, the next facility I want to mention to you all is the uh, Kendrick Family Farm, um, donated um, fully and finally in 2017 by the Reverend Dr. Paula Kendrick Hartsfeld and her husband, George Hartsfeld. This is our educational lab. It's a key priority for this facility is for educational purposes and um, us along with partners um, through Natural Resources Conservation Service and others have used it as a training facility for grain crops and for soils and for landscape evaluation, as well as for production and research purposes. Uh, that facility is 80 acres, about 62 of which are arable and we have graduate student and undergraduate projects going on there in addition to soybean, corn, uh, wheat and barley production. Um, I owe a special debt of thanks to the generous support of friends and alumni. Um, and through that support, we've been able to make that facility um, more or less self-supporting and, and been able to carry out a number of on-site improvements because of the, of the um, receipts from those efforts. Um, well, as all of you are aware, for a number of years, we've been making the transition from, from being a department of agriculture to a college of agriculture. And first we were in the form of units and now departments. Uh, the Department of Animal Science continues to shine. Um, and we've made a couple of additions that I want to alert to you or alert you to. Um, after Sue Webb's retirement just a few years ago, we hired Natalie Mook as an instructor. And more recently, our beef specialist, Dr. Adam McGee. Uh, some of the recent program additions that you've likely heard of include a addition of a major in equine science, as well as a three plus one program in poultry science, where students would complete the first three years of their animal science degree at Missouri State University, followed by a year of, um, of courses at the University of Arkansas. Dr. Gary Webb serves as the animal science department head. The uh, next department I want to highlight to you is the Department of Agribusiness, Education and Communication. Um, relatively new addition to ABEC is the, is the faculty member, Dr. Kelsey Opat. She's an assistant professor in ag communication. Um, Missouri State continues, as most of you are aware, to be a leader in producing teachers and ag education and our ABEC students and graduates continue to influence ag policy and business. Um, statewide. Dr. Arbinder Ramal is head of the Agribusiness Education and Communication Department. The last of our three departments that I highlight to you is, um, is the Department of Environmental Plant Science and Natural Resources. Plant Science and Natural Resources Department has faculty both in Carls Hall and at the Mountain Grove Research Station. About a year ago, 
um, maybe a little over a year ago, forestry branched. Yeah, I, I went there. I used the pun. Uh, we branched into a natural our natural resources major. We now have a general natural resources major as well as a major in forestry. And maybe I'm the only one who enjoyed that pun, but that's enough. The uh, three plus one program uh, currently underway with the Southwest University from Chongqing, China is, um, is uh, in many respects similar to our its predecessor, uh, a program that we carried out with um, Ningxia University um, in that we are now hosting even a larger number of students in our coursework. We have more than 100 students participating in, in, um, on our roster, and uh, we look forward to hosting these students eventually on campus when we can fully and finally place the pandemic behind us. Um, once these students are on campus, they'll, of course, engage um, in our regular courses and, uh, and complete their degree with their final year at Missouri State University. Uh, Dr. Chin Fong Huang is head of the Environmental Plant Science and Natural Resources Department. Well, I want to uh, wrap up here by highlighting a, a quote that's one of the among the most memorable, though there are many that I have from, from Dr. Elliott, and that is that a perspective that is important for us to keep as educators and that most of you as alumni will recall that um, our faculty and our staff do not, cannot, will not view students as an interruption. They're the reason we're here. And part of the reason why our students um, reflect well on the experience that they had at Missouri State is not just because of a meaningful faculty, but because of the leadership of their fellow students in a number of agriculture clubs. Um, those clubs and organizations reinforce and provide a, their, its own form of laboratory for students to grow in leadership and, and in their experiences. And we're um, tremendously valuable, value the efforts of, of you as alumni and students and friends um, that have helped to foster those programs that are so important to our retention and experiences. Other students continue to um, gain experience um, through uh, a hopefully revived study abroad program now called Education Abroad. Um, we've got, we'll be hosting again students from Brazil this spring. We're very happy for the resumption of that program and look forward to um, resuming programming um, around, the, uh, around the state and country. Um, with that, I'll bring, uh, bring this presentation to a close. The view of our faculty and Dr. Del Vecchio um, there in the foreground, and uh, uh, perhaps Dr. Elliott will have some comments as well. Greg? Well, thank you, uh, Mike, uh, for that, uh, that information. Uh, I'm just here uh, to try to help along, and uh, uh, with the uncertainty of, uh, and the quick events that uh, dramatically changed the way things were uh, heading. Uh, then I, last week, I'd ask uh, if I had offered to, if there was somebody I could help, I, I wanted to do that. And, uh, and then, uh, so uh, Cliff Smart, uh, President Smart, as well as Dr. Ian Hellick uh, invited me here to uh, to help out uh, in this transition time uh, and uh, without it interfering or intruding in the, the Board of Governors appointment that, uh, that I was honored to uh, receive. And so it's uh, with that, uh, it's in that volunteering uh, state of uh, helping out in these uh, times when uh, we can, uh, when people can make those uh, good decisions uh, to move us into the future. So uh, I'm, uh, I, whenever Mike told me that he was on today, uh, this uh, I had just uh, been announced yesterday, but my second day, uh, I decided I wanted to be at Mountain Grove uh, after the first day at, on campus uh, there in Springfield and the DAR Center. Uh, so uh, we were able to, our staff here was able to uh, get me involved with this today at Mountain Grove, uh, the food experiment station. So th that's the, the, I just look for uh, good things to happen. Uh, they uh, are, we have a great team uh, that's uh, very well uh, accustomed to successes. 
and uh, and that's what I want uh, us to really uh, uh, see if we can help build toward that uh, in the future. And uh, all the partnerships. Whenever I see all of those facilities and all of these uh, these clubs and all of these. Uh, great ideas came from a lot of places, uh, as uh, Mike uh, quickly said. I would always say, students, uh, you're here to learn, but you're here to share what you know as well. Every one of you come with a unique set of experiences that uh, that we as faculty uh, can can gain from those, as we all gain from each other. And uh, and our alumni and our donors are incredible and uh, has, uh, has made this program what it is. Uh, state funding is always uh, 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 frugal, uh, and, uh, and what makes a difference is what Brent Dunn is always uh, reminding everybody that, uh, that the private donors and the grants and all the contacts that get those grants have made what this program is today. And uh, and what we what we anticipate occurring in the future. So with that uh, comments, uh, I can just if I can share any comments uh, that you might want to have interest about. Well, I'll be happy to do so. But thank you, Mike, for giving me this opportunity. All right, Dr. Burton, would you like to come back on? We'll now transition into our question and answer session, and we do have one that has come in. Uh, so please, uh, for those of you out there with us, please feel free to use the chat function or the Q&A, and I will start with this first one. Um, and, and, um, a. a. Gornant um, reaches out and says, I'm interested in teaching a course on laboratory animal science in the animal science department. Certification can be obtained in this course through the American Association of Laboratory Animal Science. I think animal science, biomedical, and CNAS students would be attracted to this type of course, especially those wanting to continue their education with graduate studies using animals and research. Who would I talk to about pursuing the possibility of this potential course? Mike, do you want to go for that one, or you want me to try to answer? That? I, I think you should. I think she should talk to the G, to the dean. Oh, <laughs> Mike, Mike has got this down. Uh, uh, you know, uh, that's a, a really quite an interesting topic as uh, when you've been watching the occurrences, we do have a, for years we knew that uh, beef cattle are important and horses are important uh, in Missouri. But also the companion animal, uh, small animal uh, groups are, are very important. And we started uh, a, a companion animal as well as domesticated animal simultaneously with uh, Dr. Dennis Schmidt a few years ago. And we had a, a parallel. So the point is we've been interested in both animals, types of, for a long time, and they both complement each other. And, uh, and they share from repro to nutrition and so on together, but there is a distinction with, uh, with training or with, uh, with, other, with other uses of animals uh, in their daily lives. And so the, it, we do, uh, we're looking, and Dr. Sukhavati is uh, the, the, the veterinarian that will be leading that that new facility out at the Dar Center that is uh, a small animal uh, emphasis. In the years gone by, we felt like that uh, we'd have a lot of veterinarians in Springfield and, uh, and also a lot of students that go on to veterinary school at the University of Missouri and do uh, interns and so on. And so they, they're, we're still exploring some of these opportunities that where we can utilize the publics as we attract new publics into our program of animal science, where the uh, whatever species it is. And the other one that we, we often overlook is zoo animals. And, uh, and they obviously are, are very much uh, the care, the health and the appropriate treatment 
of all of these have, have been there. Uh, so, and it interfaces with our ag business program incredibly well because there is a business that's associated with each of these knowledge subject matters. And so the business, uh, I, I'm really anxious to see those uh, connections unfold. So uh, Mike, I, I know I overlooked some things. Uh, and to, to I guess to just to wrap up the the question, I think I think there's always interest in in topic areas like this. So I'd urge you to to send an email to both Doctors Webb and to Dr. Elliott. Copy me on it if you like, and I we'd be happy to discuss those opportunities. Thank you. And I, I will add one other thing is that uh, uh, serving on the board of governors, I find a a, a, a real opportunity and a and a weight. And, I, and, and, and it's really looking at the whole picture, but then agriculture for this short period of time, uh, I'll be looking at that, but one of the topics that the governors have talked about is how do we engage the public in public education to make sure that we do this in unorthodox ways and unorthodox uh, timeframes so that we are friendly to a public that's very active. And this takes a unique, uh, training of uh, educated people to plug into programs that uh, that may not fit with our regular expertise that are on staff. And so I just uh, really look at some of these as real opportunities for not only agriculture, but but in other and other colleges. Yes. Thank you both. We have. Um... Thank you. You're welcome. Um, there's a question here from Yo Logan Yearsley, and I'm going to tack on to to Logan's question as well. Um, Logan says, great presentation. As an alum who has been away for a time, what are some major projects that the college is pursuing in the next few years? And if I could add to that in a similar vein, um, Dr. Elliott and Dr. Burton and the senior level and the leadership of the college, are there new majors that you all have discussed in adding um, into the future? And um, is the, for example, Brew science, I know, is is a trend in agriculture colleges across the country. Is that something that we and you're at Mountain Grove, Dr. Elliott? We certainly have wine there and fruit. Um, is is that something that the that the Darag College would would consider into the future? So two part. Logan Yearsley asks about major projects that the college may pursuing, and then my question is about the academic content and its growth. The I, I can take a stab at it, but I don't, that, 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 Mike, I defer to you uh, to start it out and then I'll fill in. Well, if I'm going to start this out, first I need to, to give a virtual high five to Logan Yearsley. Logan, along with Matt Walmack years ago, was uh, assisted me with the agronomy contest for FFA. So Logan, super glad you're, you're on this webinar. Um, and yes, there, there are a number of, of both bricks and mortar uh, programs that we're looking at, as well as uh, programmatic ones, um, from the uh, from the bricks and mortar side, we're hopeful of of uh, constructing a precision technology facility, as well as the possibility of a livestock management facility. Uh, it's unclear yet where all the funding will come from for to in order to support those two projects, but these are our priorities for us, to both to support ag education and training in a diverse area of agriculture. Um, Logan, as you know, many of our students come with a uh, diversified interest. So we may have a plant science major who also produces cattle or the reverse. We may have a beef specialist or equine specialist who's got interest in plant sciences or business. Um, so in order to be able to offer people the perspectives that they might have with precision agriculture, with, um, with uh, uh, the uh, judicious and wise management of, of livestock for low stress movement um, of, uh, and handling of livestock. These are areas that, that we want our uh, faculty and staff and, and especially our students to be trained in just because it increases safety and opportunities. Um, other programs, uh, we hope to, um, for example, set up some grain bins at the, um, at the Kendrick family farm facility, both to allow us um, some storage opportunities for a more, um, uh, a, a more opportunities in using products that we develop on one farm 
at another location as an example. So grains that are grown at the, at the Kendrick family farm might be fed to livestock at the Dar Agricultural Facility as an example. So, um, and it would also provide ag business and education students with the opportunity to, to see um, grain storage facilities, um, how to design their handling um, on, in a small scale. We're only talking about 62 arable acres there, um, but how to keep grain separate, grain moisture storage, and of course, marketing, uh, because there's certainly um, gains to be made if we were able to, to sell our grains um, after the winter as opposed to at harvest. Uh, programmatically, um, we've expanded our course offerings more in the dimension of certificates in recent years than we have in majors. Now, I mentioned a few different majors, and there are certainly, there's certainly the possibility of, of capitalizing on interest in, in any of several new dimensions, but we normally try to follow this progression of introducing a certificate to gauge interest where a certificate is, um, is interesting and successful, <clears throat> then we try to elevate that into a, a minor while maintaining a certificate program so that non-majors and others might participate in it. Where minors are really popular, then those might evolve into a, a major sort of program. Um, so at present, uh, Greg, I, I don't have a, an answer to the, to the brew um, science perspective, but I am a fan of water filtered through barley. So um, I, I would be uh, the first person to, to sign up if we were um, able to do a, a course in, in uh, brew science. I see the Missouri State Logger and alumni <laughs> buying this in droves. This, is, this has been something that's been on my mind for, for several years. Um, I, I would, I've, like a lot of other people, I, I think that wouldn't it be cool if we had an entirely homegrown brew in Missouri, even if it didn't taste good, I think I would buy it. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, barley production in our region is is challenging, and um, and so uh, be able to produce barley and hops here in a, in a humid climate, um, one that our springs typically warm up quickly, is is difficult. Dr. Elliott knows this firsthand, having worked in in barley breeding. Um, but I think it's possible, and I would love to uh, to take a chance on it. Wonderful. Any other questions I, from the group? Well, I might just add uh, the idea uh, underscoring that uh, certificates, but even one step beyond, we have, uh, the whole university is looking at marketing its majors in a different way or additional way, and that is through the skills, uh, skills and knowledge and uh, aspect because it's uh, because w w one thing that always reminded me and, and Mike mentioned it I know I could name horticulturalists that were in animal science ag businesses that were in animal science every crisscross imaginable because as I and one just the other day to stop me and had happened to meet me for the first time in 30 years and, uh, and she apologized that she'd gotten her degree in wildlife conservation and management, but not had work there. And I said, you were a success, weren't you? And that must have been because you learned in addition to what the title of that, of that degree was. So that's what we've always tried to do is uh, we're, we're developing the whole person, not just a skill only. And, and that's how we viewed what a real education, what an educated person is, as Dr. Kaiser would usually say, that's what we're in the business of doing, developing educated persons, much more than trained people. So anyway, uh, Thank you, Dr. good point. Uh, Robert, I remember you well. <laughs> the, um, here is another question from Logan. Is there a two-year institute within the college that holds the certificate programs? University of Maryland has the Institute of Applied Agriculture, where you pursue a two-year certificate. It works hand in hand with the four-year program. Now I was just wondering if that existed here at MSU. You talked and, and you said two-year program. Yeah, so uh, it, is there a two-year institute within the college that holds the certificate programs? And um, the well, example was University of Maryland has an institute where their two-year certificate could line up with the four-year program. 
Well, we think so. And that's why we think uh, the, the certificates, we were actually not allowed to go with associate degrees, which were two degrees. We agreed not to go that with the OTC and, and, and other community colleges. But we have certificates that can line up perfectly with other, uh, and we're totally in tune with the community college system. My goodness, we in fact we built on them because some of our mechanization skills, like welding and so on and so on, we didn't. That was not what we wanted to do because they that's their bailiwick, and we use that skill to go into our ag education BS degree that uh, went out. So. Uh, and the, there's perfect examples of, and even we have uh, clinics uh, that, that deal with the brewing industry uh, that build into a knowledge base of others uh, as we stair step it. As uh, we're always worried about numbers of, uh, of uh, uh, with the coordination across the state, are we producing enough numbers and we got to build the numbers in order to build to a, a degree or uh, so it's a stable process. So. Mm -hmm. I think that I, a couple of questions that just we'll, we can wrap up here unless there's others out there, but uh, can you talk about the profile of a current student? Um, are they majority coming from Missouri and when they graduate, do they stay here in Missouri? Um, what are you seeing as a trend as it relates to enrollment and the type of student we're interacting and um, and, the, and, and the growth? Is it stagnant? Is it, is it up? Is it down? Um, how does it vary? I think Dr. Elliott outweighed me. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me tell you a little bit about what what we've experienced in in the the, the COVID pandemic. Um, we've of course seen seen a, a bit of a shift in that we've got more students than ever who are totally online, and uh, and that's true in the College of Agriculture and, and in colleges across the university. And so that's that's had some effect on us because students are of course taking a sampling of courses that are simply available online. Um, we are down slightly. I mean, we had a maximum just a few years ago of about 800 students that were majors in the College of Agriculture, and we're 650 to 700, depending on, on how we count those now. Um, we continue to draw from our base. Greene County and the surrounding six counties that touch um, Greene County are, are a big part of our, of our recruiting base, but we also have a national recruitment. Right. We've got students who come from Virginia and from Rhode Island and, and from many states away, attracted to one program or to another. We've, we've um, uh, whether it's equine or to plant sciences or ag business, students tend to uh, find out about the reputation of our programs and the affordability of our, of our work. And that's, that's sort of a, a way that I want to echo on what Dr. Elliott was explaining a moment ago that, you know, we've got our, our two-year programs, which receive enormous funding from the state. And so with that underwriting that they receive, they can provide things like welding and other sorts of fabrication programs quite economically. And then we build on that with, with the bigger picture. And, uh, and I think students still seek us out for that, whether they come to us with a certificate program thinking that they're more or less going to assemble an education in an a la carte format, which we do have students who do that, or we have students who are just all in for ag education or some other program whenever they arrive. Um, so um, our, uh, our programming in the future, well, we, we hope to uh, continue to ramp up our recruitment. Uh, we see uh, opportunities with our um, new recruitment specialist and, of course, Every faculty member recognizes that recruitment is everyone's job. So if you as an alumni are aware of, of qualified students who are interested in agriculture or who are interested in the sciences that are the underpinning of agriculture, please send them our way. Um, because I think uh, that's a dimension in which we can continue to expand in reaching out to students who might not recognize that agriculture is a home to molecular genetics, that agriculture is home to water quality, that agriculture is home to animal safety and security. So, um, so if you have the opportunity, brag on us. 
Thank you. I, if I could add one other thing, and that is uh, that the international dimension uh, is, uh, is an important one for Missouri State and, uh, and agriculture. And, 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 the, and it's important not only for those that are working in international fronts, but it's also for those international companies in the United States that needs that exposure to is separate them from other people, uh, frankly. And so I, I really have been proud and, and it was highlighted uh, the international programs and how we at Missouri State and Mike Burton's been a leader in that. Uh, in fact, our first was in, uh, in Haiti a few years ago. And so uh, anyway, uh, those are the things that makes um, the experience a total one uh, at the Missouri State that, uh, that we hope to really fill that niche and fill it better. Great. Well, um, gentlemen, I think Thomas Rollo asked the best question to end on, um, which is great to hear from everyone. As an alum who is now currently active in the professional field, given the low unemployment rates since the beginning of COVID, is there any source or contact information where alumni can reach out to professors or staff to get students aware of current job openings related to the College of Agriculture in hopes of landing a job from graduation. And I'll just continue to add to that. How can alumni, not only looking to hire students, but stay connected to the college and, and serve the college in other capacities, what do you recommend that they do um, to connect with you and to stay informed? Well, first I want to say, hey, Tom, as I recall, you're a wildlife conservation major. I can remember some conversations that we had about uh, setting up food plots, and I hope that uh, that you're able to work in that arena and and happily employed there. Um, I, I think I, I have two things that I would mention. One is um, agriculture at missouristate.edu. That's an easy uh, email address to remember. You can send a note there and uh, and get in contact with, with us through our administrative assistant who will handle that message and send it on to a faculty or staff member most appropriate to, to uh, help with it. Um, we frequently learn of, of announcements and then make them available to our students, staff, and faculty. Um, I have to look into how we might be able to make those available to alumni as well. Uh, the second point that I would make is um, our ag alumni. It's awesome. We've got a, got a terrific group. I, I believe I saw that Matt Walmack was signed up on the list. He's currently our, our president of the Ag Alumni, and they do a fantastic job of, of, uh, of coordinating with our friends and our family um, and, uh, and supporting a tremendous scholarship program. Look, folks, if, you, if you're not aware of how wonderful the support that we have for students through, um, through our scholarship program is, you, you need to get in touch with Matt Walmack. Um, so if you're interested in, in connecting in that way, then I suggest that, that you could connect with agriculture at missouristate.edu and we'll get you connected with Matt Walmack. Um, Craig, you've probably got foundation connection that you can make. Um, Dr. Elliott, any other comments there? Not specifically other than we, it's a joy for every one of our uh, faculty to, to hear from you and I I could name you know from Fuquay to on and on and on and I have Ruth Johnson and so uh, and we also know that you're pretty good in, uh, with Facebook and other um, uh, social media ways of, uh, of, of messaging us and some of us are not too whoopy at that but some but, but we are guided that direction by those who are so we just would love to hear from you. Thank you, Dr. Elliott and Dr. Burton. And then I'd like to uh, turn the program over to our Vice President of Advancement, Brent Dunn. Brent, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks, Greg. And, and you heard uh, today through several examples uh, that Dr. Burton and Dr. Elliott talked about that, that we have great private support for the DAR College of Ag. Um, as you may know, we're in a campaign uh, it's called the Onward Upward Campaign. Those two words came from the original fight song, the university. But the goal is to raise $250 million for scholarship support, for faculty support, program support, and capital support. And we're ending the campaign. We opened it in 2019, ending it on October 29th 
of this year. So please write that down on your calendars uh, and, and hold October 29th. Actually, that's, that is homecoming week on campus and uh, we'll be back to normal things as usual with uh, the parade, uh, the football game, all types of activities all that week. But that, that night uh, we're celebrating in a very special event that you all are invited to. It's gonna be held at JQH Arena uh, doors open at seven, programs at 7.30. Uh, you, you've heard of our chairman, probably, of the campaign, John Goodman, probably our most well-known alum around the world, not just the United States. Uh, he has been chairing this campaign. He'll be here in person again, as he did in the kickoff. We'll have uh, uh, student support in terms of the, the entire marching band, the 300-member grand chorus, uh, a lot of talent and, and some nationally uh, recognized talent uh, that will uh, participate in the hour show. It's a fun show, but basically it, it's showing uh, through words and picture uh, the before when the campaign started and the after when the campaign ended and the differences it made in the university. So uh, it will be fun. So please put down October 29th. Greg? Thank you, Brent. And uh, Dr. Elliott, Dr. Burton, is there anything else you'd like to share with the group that you didn't think we covered as we close out? Sure, I, I just want to, I just want to say thank you. Um, those of you who are engaged in this already have a have a terrific interest, but, but we're successful because of the support and interest that we have from students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends. And I'm grateful for, for your support of, of the College of Agriculture and of the university. And, and we look forward to continued partnership in, in educating the next generation of agriculturalists. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burton. And I, I just echo the thank you for uh, also uh, on behalf of all the alumni and, and all of the, the donors that made this uh, the place it is. Uh, so, and all the friends uh, that come through our minds. So, thank you for letting me be a part of this. Dr. Elliott, thank you for your service and stepping into this role. Dr. Burton, thank you, thank you to your years of service and for your presentation today on the update, great update on the Dark College of Education. I'll do a quick shameless plug. Um, so we do have, for two things, one, we have two more conversations with the college um, next week. We have a conversation with uh, Julie Matterson, who's the Dean of our Graduate College, and Dr. D. Sisko, who's the Vice President of Student Affairs. They round out our 10-part series of the conversation with the colleges. If you're interested in learning about either the Graduate College or what's happening um, on campus and as it relates to resources and student life, please tune into those conversations. Also, uh, thank you for tuning into this, um, this conversation. The DAR Ag College has over 5,000 alumni in it. Um, we can communicate with about 2,300 of you. So if you got this invitation that's electronic, please share it with your friends and people you went to school with and encourage them if they did not hear about this to let us know uh, where they are and who they are so that we can communicate with them about these opportunities going forward. Um, and, and, and echoing that and continuing that theme, um, we have a number of positions available here at the Alumni Association. One of them in particular is going to be working directly with all of our colleges to plan more specific engagement programming for you alumni to connect with your college, just like this conversation today. And so if you're interested in learning more about that opportunity or others, um, please reach out to us. I would love to connect with you and, and share what these opportunities are here at your alumni association. Uh, thank you for spending the lunch hour with us. Again, my name is Greg Fansler and looking forward to, um, to connecting with all of you here in the near future. Um, and um, without a doubt, always, it's a great day to be a bear. Go Bears. Take care, everyone.